Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining Sim and myself for our fifth installment of our marketing workshops. This one is how to increase your MSP's exposure on Google. I can see a few people trickling in. We'll try to kick off fairly early though, because we do have, we'll leave a section for, for Q&A. Um, if you do have any questions, please uh, drop them in the Q&A um, so we don't miss them um, and we can answer them towards the end there. So again, um, thanks Sim for joining us for our fifth installment. So just as a reminder guys, um, we have six marketing workshops um, that we have with in conjunction with Pounce Marketing. The first session that we had was on building insightful buyer personas. We've worked on email marketing best practices, some things to consider at the start of 2022 to kickstart um, your marketing efforts, um, amplifying your presence on LinkedIn. And now this one on um, increasing your exposure on Google. So just as a reminder, we're giving you away an hour strategic uh, marketing cons consult with Pounce Marketing for MSPs who have attended and had the most engagement in and across this series of webinars. Um, so hopefully you guys are finding this valuable. Now I'll kick, um, I'll hand over and kick off the, the marketing workshop and over to you, Sim. Perfect. Thanks, Meryl. Well, I'm so glad to be joining you guys. I am so sorry that for those of you that were here for the fourth webinar that I wasn't able to attend, but I've got my doppelganger, Sydney. It's kind of ironic that we kind of have a very similar name, but um, yeah, she was here with you guys doing the LinkedIn session. But um, I know we've got a jam-packed 30 minutes um, and there's definitely going to be heaps of questions. So back to what Meryl was saying, I'm happy to take um, any questions you guys have and just type it in the Q&A uh, chat box and I'll address it uh, towards the end of the webinar. So the real um, focus on this session today for you guys is really on how to increase your exposure on Google. And what I'm really going to deep dive into, or as best as I can in the next 30 minutes, is really focusing on how you can set up your Google My Business um, and really start amplifying your digital presence as well. So for those that don't know who I am, my name is Sim. I've been in the cybersecurity space for over 15 years now. Um, five years in, I've kind of also launched my own marketing agency specializing in cybersecurity and technology. Um, we kind of do everything from creative marketing, technology, anything a business needs to run an integrated marketing campaign. And that's kind of why I was super excited when Meryl told me that, hey, we want to run a marketing workshop for the channel. I'm like, yep, I'm definitely in because I think there's a lot of education that we need to do and there's lots of tips and tricks um, that I'd love to share with everyone. And I hope to impart that um, on you guys in this session today. So before we get started, I'm not sure if we can do a raise the hand, but it will just be good for me to get an understanding in terms of how many people actually have Google My Business set up at the moment. So if you just maybe type your answer in chat. Oh, I've got a few hand raises, perfect. Anyone else wanna raise a hand on if they've set up Google My Business? All right. Well, it's gonna be a fun session and hopefully, um, Don, you've got it set up, but hopefully there can be a few little tips and tricks that I might be able to share um, to help you improve your profile. So bear with me, guys. So when we look at Google, it's always like, we don't say, hey, let's search for it. We always say, hey, let's just Google it, right? So this is applicable to whether you are, um, you know, looking for a product, looking for a service, like everyone just literally, the main search engine that everyone goes to is Google to find what you need. So keeping that in mind, what is GMB? So you guys will hear me throughout the presentation refer to Google My Business as GMB because that's just another acronym to throw into the mix. I know in cybersecurity we've got heaps of acronyms, so I thought I'd join the bandwagon and give you another one just to keep, um, keep on top of your mind. So what is Google My Business? So Google My Business is a free tool by Google to really help you optimize your business profile. 
So if you think about it realistically, it's a modern version of the yellow pages, right? The old school days, you know, you used to get those big books and then you'd be looking for businesses through the yellow pages. But um, welcome to the new century that we're all working in and we've got the modern day version of the yellow pages being Google. Why is it really important? So it's important because looking at how COVID has hit a lot of businesses, more and more people are searching for things online. You know, so based on rates and stats, you know, 90% of people learn more about a local company online rather than anywhere else. 88% um, of searches for local businesses really happen on a mobile device, and they either want to call or visit a business within 24 hours of their search. Um, and the next stat that I love is that 92% of searches will pick up businesses on the first page of local search results. So this is kind of why making sure you've got your Google My Business profile set up is really going to help you with your overarching SEO strategy. And SEO, I mean search engine optimization. So why is it really important and why should I care about setting up my Google My Business profile or my GMB profile correctly? Well, as I've kind of alluded to, it allows your business to be more visible in the, in the face of any of the prospects that you're going to. So if anyone's looking for a cybersecurity company, anyone's looking for antivirus solutions, you know, they're going to type that into Google. And depending on how you rank as a business or how you set up your profile, um, your listing might appear on the right-hand side of your search because it might be within a geo um, location of your business as well. Um, it's also the first place that com customers look for up-to-date information about your company. And this could be like your operating hours, where you're located, your services. So all those things are kind of what is all included in your GMB profile. It also helps you improve your business's SEO local ranking. So if you, I'll be walking you through the steps so you don't have to worry too much about that now, but I'll walk you through this um, later on in my presentation. Uh, GMB also allows customers to send you messages directly through your GMB listing. And the most important thing about GMB is that it gives your business social credibility, right? And what I mean by that is GMB allows you to have reviews um, of people or your customers that have engaged with you in the service. So this ranges from a one star to a five star um, rating, but a lot of businesses look at reviews before engaging with them directly. And that's kind of why we want to make sure our profile is up to date. Um, it's got good reviews and it's got all the details that your customers are looking for. So when we look at GMB, I'm going to walk you through an eight step process. I'm also going to be giving you some of my pro tips in terms of how to optimize it effectively, but it's not as hard as people think. It just really requires a bit of time. If you ask me, like, you know, I know some of the things that we kind of think of is how long is this going to take me or how much time do I have to invest in it? Well, after you've verified your account, I'd say it generally takes a good rule of thumb is about a week. And by a week, I don't mean you sitting there like every day for eight hours um, trying to get your profile set up. But I mean, like, you know, if you do a little bit today, a little bit tomorrow, you come back, revisit it. Within a week, you should be able to get your profile set up and good to go. So how do we even get started, right? What is GMB and where can I even do, go to get my account set up? So the first thing that we need to do is identify if you have an account. And then the next thing is to verify. Why I say it's important to claim your account is that, you know, we've worked with some clients that, you know, many moons ago, they had someone in marketing or someone in sales, someone set it up. They don't even remember the login details, but it's possible for you to go back in and claim your account again. So if you don't know the login details, you can always go through the process to get the information you need. Um, it's quite simple. If you don't have an account, you can just go to business.google.com slash create to get started. So what does that look like? When you log into or if you type the URL, um, it will either show you the option that you can either claim your business or you can create your business listing. Um, if you search for your business but you don't really find any results, then you probably need to create a new listing. Um, and either way, um, as you can see, like I've taken a quick screenshot for you, um, we've got our account set up via our digital account. 
um, and it's a generic email address, but I already have a profile. Um, and in this case, what I needed to do was because I wanted to access my own account as SIM, um, I needed to verify my account through GMB. My pro tip for you guys is that Google has a few different ways for you to verify your account. You can either generally do this by phone, email, or generally most of the time it does verification happens via snail mail. So they generally post out um, your details to your nominated address. Um, but it can take about two to three weeks because I've had a few instances working with clients that, you know, through the verification process, they've never received the letter with the code because ultimately what comes in is there's a code, you put the co code back into your profile, and then you're good to go. So as long as you get the verification process out of the way early, the rest of the steps are kind of easy for you to kind of set up. The next step is um, when you log into your GMB account, it is going to ask you to select a few different categories for your business. There are primary categories and secondary categories. And whilst I understand that there's heaps of categories to choose from, you really want to make sure you're identifying the right category that is specific to your business. Um, so, for example, if I'm a managed service provider, I might look at either IT security services as my primary category. I might look at IT support and services as my primary ca category. The thing that I would really um, advise you all on is that there are lots of categories, but review which one is going to be specific to your business. And that leads me to my next pro tip. When we're looking at your primary categories, you probably want to choose two or three, maybe not more than that. And for your secondary categories, you probably want to choose one or two. The more specific you are, the, li the higher the likelihood of people finding you. In the case of Pound, our primary category is marketing agency. And you know, on the right-hand side of your Google search, um, you can clearly see that my category is marketing agency, and that's listed just below my profile. The next thing you want to do is you want to add images to your Google My Business profile. And that's really important because it gives your customer a sense of who you are as an organization. So this can include images of <clears throat> photos of inside your business, photos of the exterior of your business. It can include photos of your team. Um, it can also be used to kind of showcase your values, your culture. Um, but, you know, depending on the type of organization you are, you want to really put yourself in the shoes of your clients and think about what would they like to see about a business if they were choosing to engage them for a particular service, right? We want to make sure that those photos are really good quality and they're reflective of you as a business. Um, the other thing to note with your images as well is you want to keep them current. So for example, um, at Pounce we were located on Pitt Street before, but three years in we're now on York Street. We have gone back into our Google My Business listing and we've removed all the old photos of our old um, office and we've updated all the images to make sure we're covering our new office so people know exactly when they walk in, what our office looks like, the team that they're working with as well. My pro tip is to make sure you use high res photos, right? And the reason why I say this is that if your images are pixelated or they're not of a high quality, it, people, it, it can be off-putting, you know, particularly say for example, not that you guys are a photography company, but let's just throw an example out there that if you're a photography company and your photos on your GMB listing are like, dull, drab, you know, not the best quality, then as a user or as a customer searching for that type of product, I'm probably going to be like, oh, well, I'm not really sure the quality of the services they're going to offer because if they can't even put nice photos on their site, then I'm not sure if they're the right fit for me. What so happens, Sim? I think that's one of the... Sorry, Sorry to interrupt. I just wanted to know, so what happens, Sim, if... Um, you don't upload any photos at all? Is Google then going to grab whatever it links to your your business name, for instance, and then just have that appear? 
Correct. So generally what tends to happen is that it will just pull something from Street View. So if you've added your own um, address for your business, the first point of call would be it'll pull your the street view of that address, which is probably not best practice. Um, other than that, it'll also pull other images that are relevant. So if you've got logos or, you know, things that kind of tie and associate with that. So my, my thing would be to take control of the narrative and you put the photos that you want people to see on there. The next thing that we want to do is make sure that we set up all our basic information on your GMB listing. So as you can see here, <clears throat> you want to add in your office hours, your contact information, your company logo. Um, you've also got the ability to put a description of your business in there. So I'd say probably take the time to make sure that this is all set up correctly so people can easily find you. Particularly, particularly if your business is a service-based business and during like the Christmas period, you know, your office is closed, it's important to also update the contact information on your GMB profile so, you know, it doesn't create a negative user experience if someone is looking for customer support. Based on your GMB profile, it says that you guys are, are open during Christmas period, but you're really not. You know, so then it can kind of be like, well, I thought on the GMB listing they were open, but it's some of those things that you need to consider. So my pro tip for you guys is to make sure you're consistent with all the information you put on your GMB profile across all the other channels. For example, your Facebook channel, your LinkedIn channel, your Instagram channel, or any of the other listings that you are a part of. What I mean by that is... Um, our business is located on 1 York Street, Suite 3, Level 14. So on my GMB profile, that's how I've displayed it. So I want to make sure that if I'm on Facebook, I'm not saying Suite 1403, 1 York Street. I want to make sure that I'm having it consistent, that it says Suite 3, Level 14, 1 York Street. I also want to make sure that my company name is exactly the same as my GMB profile. So if on my GMB profile it says Pounce Marketing, I need to make sure that when I'm setting up my Facebook, my Instagram, my LinkedIn, it says Pounce Marketing as well. It doesn't just say Pounce because then there's a bit of a disconnect and Google can't really recognize whether you're the same company or you're not the same company. The other really good thing is with your basic information, you can also add in your website URL. You can also add in an appointment link. And by appointment link, I mean, for example, some clients, have um, an appointment schedule that you can book some time in with. Um, the appointment link can be a link to your calendar link account so people can just really go click the link and book some time with you straight away. So those are some of the tips that I'd probably uh, recommend utilizing on your account. The next one, which is my favorite one, is to once you've set up your profile, is to make sure you get reviews. <clears throat> Through your GMB profile, on the right-hand side, you'll definitely see a reviews button. Um, so it allows you to see all your reviews that you're getting, but there's also a little handy feature which says get reviews or get more reviews. Um, and as you can see on the screenshot on the right-hand side, you know, you can just either copy and paste the link, you can email it, you can WhatsApp it, you can Facebook it. Um, but it's a great practice that we kind of suggest to all our clients that, you know, anytime you've finished a job or you've finished uh, a piece of work with a new customer, it's important in your follow-up to thank them for business and be like, hey, if you really enjoyed our service, um, are you happy to leave us a Google review? The Can one thing with Google reviews as well, is sorry, go ahead, Meryl. Sorry. Uh, I just wanted to know, so can partners, um, I know a number of partners have um, customer testimonials that they have already, whether it's on their website, things like that, because they have that existing, is that something that they can um, attempt to, I guess, copy and paste and have it reviewed? Or is it the end customer would have to <coughs> click on that particular link to actually leave a Google review? So great question. So with Google reviews, you would need a Gmail address or a Gmail domain to leave a review. So if you've already got something on your website, you can't really copy and paste it because the person actually has to leave the review themselves. So my my tip would be that 
get your customers to leave you a Google review, and then you can copy and paste that review or link that onto your website. Because you've got it in one solid place, but that's really gonna help you with your rankings. Um, the other thing is with reviews, <laughs> I know this happens a lot like in the F&B industry, like you know, you've gone to a restaurant and you've had a shocking experience, you leave them a one-star review because you're so pissed off. But any review, it's like almost a saying, right? Good, pr any press, good press is bad. Any press is good press. Yeah, whether it's good or bad. I had to think about that one, guys. Sorry, I haven't had enough coffee just yet. But it's really important to reply to all your reviews. And by that, I mean within 24 to 48 hours, right? If you do get a negative review, don't sit there and be like, how do I delete it? The first thing that we need to do is, number one, acknowledge the review. So reply back to the review. Don't provide any blame. So if they're not happy with the service, don't be like, well, that's your problem. You know, we delivered the top class service. You really need to be mindful in terms of how you structure your reply, but it is really important to reply. And as you go through, any business will have, no business will have, or it's very rare for any business to have 100% 1,000 five-star reviews, right? Because then it's almost like that's not really real. So even if you do get a negative review, take the time to respond to it uh, and turn the narrative and then just try to get more positive reviews so then it actually moves further down and all people are really seeing are the positive reviews um, of your site. The next thing is, oh, I'm just mindful of time. I'm going to get a little bit quicker because I want to get you guys out of here soon. Um, we're nearly there, guys is that you can add offers um, to your GMB profile. So, you know, if you've got a discount, you're offering um, a free cybersecurity audit, you can post these offers on your GMB profile. So anyone searching for something, that will be the first thing that pops up on the right-hand side. Um, you can also add some call to action buttons. So that is also included in my pro tip. And some of those call to action buttons include whether you want to book online, you want to ask online. If you're an e-commerce store, you might want to buy products online. Um, you can add more information. You can register now or you can call now. So there's lots of different things. But the one thing with your GMB profile, guys, is that you want to keep continuously updating it, right? Just because you set it up once, great. But make sure that every quarter or every month, I know sometimes once a month is a bit of a hard ask, but I'd say like if every quarter you review it, see what else you can update, keep your content fresh and relevant, that will definitely help kind of boost your profile in Google's algorithm. The other thing that GMB allows you to do is it allows you to add posts. So these posts can be either content, it can be a blog post, but it's almost like free advertising space that you don't have to pay for from Google. So one thing with these posts as well to note is that after six months, Google tends to archive um, those posts for you. So if you put something up there, you wanna make sure that you know, you're know you sharing it, you're updating it. If no one's engaging with that post or you're like, well, no one seems to be clicking um, on the link, then you can always change up that piece of content. Um, my pro tip is that sometimes what we do as Pants as well is we put our latest blog link um, on our GMB post just for some thought leadership content. And that also ties into some of the keywords we want to rank for as a business. The next option you have with GMB is to set up messaging. So you can allow your customers to contact you directly through your GMB listing. Um, and what that looks like is here on the right. As for us at Pounce, we don't really want to set up messaging because we want to focus on call, but some clients prefer the messaging option and that's completely fine. It will show up exactly like this here on the right. You've got call, message, you've got directions, you've got website. You can even request a quote for this cleaning company if you so choose so. Um, my pro tip is if you are setting up messaging through your GMB, download the GMB app. Um, and you can do that either through the App Store or Google Play. All you need to do is go into the Customers tab, select Messages, and turn on Messaging. So the one thing to keep in mind is that you will get notifications on whichever account you've set it up to or for the messages to go to. 
Um, but there is also time sensitivity, right? So if someone sends you a message, then a good rule of thumb would be to make sure you're getting your responses within 24 hours. Anything longer than that, then you've already lost them, right? Like I still see 24 hours as a bit long because when you send a message, you, you generally tend to want to get like an automatic response. Okay, nearly on time. So my key takeaways for you guys is that GME is part of your online presence, right? It's something that every business should do. Every business should set it up, should take the time to kind of make sure the content's updated. Um, the next thing is follow my eight-step process to set up your profile correctly. If you guys are going through the process and you are setting it up and you have like some issues along the way, um, I'm more than happy for you to flick that to Merrill and then Merrill can either kind of contact me, I can get my team to help you. Um, don't feel like you're alone. And once everything is all done, the most beautiful piece of the puzzle is to make sure you encourage customers to leave you reviews. Um, sometimes what some of our clients do is also in your email signature, you've also got to leave a review um, or leave a comment. So there's different ways to um, drive up that reviews, but it's a tool that every business should consider. And with that, I think I've got two minutes to spare, Meryl. So I might hand it back to you to see if we've got any questions. Um, yeah, that I can absolutely. Open up Great. Thanks so much, Sim. Yes, everyone, if you do have any questions for Sim, please drop them in the Q&A. I did have a few questions for you while we wait um, for any questions to come through. You mentioned it's it's like a modern yellow pages. So if that's the case, is it a pay, is it paid to have a Google My Business page? It is completely free, but what I would recommend is to make sure that you are setting it up so it reflects the services you're offering. Um, even when you are asking for reviews, you know, as an example, we're a marketing agency, we do a lot of website development. So sometimes when we get customers to leave us a review, we want to make sure that website development is something that is included in their review. So then that keyword is triggered and then that also helps to assist with our ranking profile um, through Google's algorithm. Right. Just see if there's any other questions. Um, I noticed as well there was an offers section. Was there a limit on how many offers our partners could could list there? I would generally what is say the a recommended? good rule of thumb is there isn't really a limit, but I'd probably recommend one to two and then changing it up, right? Um, so that's probably a good rule. Uh, Don, I know you'd have asked us to show you how to uh, link to a blog post. I'll kind of do a little cheat sheet and I'll send that across to you post this webinar as well. So you have that. So don't feel like um, you're missing out or anything at the moment. Um, and I think one of the next questions that we generally tend to get is, there are a lot of different search platforms. Google is predominantly the biggest one. There is also Bing. Um, being for business, um, but you know, it is such a small, minute share of the overall search volume. So I'd say if you were to focus your time and effort on something, I'd probably say focus it on GMB. Wonderful. Well, we're at time now, so. I just wanted to say thanks again, Sim, for your time and running us through um, Google My Business and how our partner community can leverage that better. As Sim said, if any of you guys have any questions, I'm happy to pass them along to, to Sim or she's got her details there on the screen as well. Um, we'll send a follow-up email as per usual with the slide deck and a um, takeaway just on the um, eight steps. Um, to increase your exposure on Google My Business. Um, as for the next marketing workshop with Sim, which is our last in the series, it's top tips to optimize your website for conversion. And it's on next month, July 12th. So um, you'll also receive those details as part of the wrap up. But hopefully everyone found value in this workshop and yeah, looking forward to the next one. All right, guys, thank you so much for your time today. And I know I talk really, really fast, but I wanted to get you out of here on time. And as Meryl said, I'm happy to answer any questions um, that you guys might have. Thanks, everyone. Talk soon. Bye. Bye, guys.